Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As I've been introduced, I am Dahapa Amwele, and we are here today to introduce the Health Defense League to the public. Where did it all start? Let me give you a bit of background. Our country has been turned upside down by the COVID-19 pandemic and all its repercussions. We as citizens have been at the receiving end of everything. Events over the last 20 months have shown a trend towards centralized control and unilateral decision making by national government and their multinational corporate partners. Internationally, this was accompanied by an unprecedented spate of censorship in all known forms, especially in the digital media. Several countries worldwide are experiencing a spate of government actions against their own people without established channels of deliberation, consultation, or public participation. Namibia has gone through a spate of lockdowns, resulting in the destruction of businesses, economic operations, and individual careers. The above has not gone unchallenged, and individuals and entities have begun to highlight alternative scenarios and views. This has been met with fierce opposition. Worldwide, highly qualified professionals and groups have come out highlighting their views and showing up discrepancies misrepresentation and plain lies in the common mainstream narrative. These individuals and entities have come under extreme attacks, including media assaults, labeling, gaslighting, and framing by followers of the mainstream narrative, as well as government and mainstream media. Some, unfortunately, have lost their jobs as a result of speaking out. These assaults has been coordinated and executed by modern media in all its form. Not everyone has accepted and followed the public narrative. Most citizens are still not sure and are skeptical about who and what to believe. We have a pandemic of polarization and distrust. Actions presented by governments are random, do not make sense, and contradict common thinking. Trust in government is at an all-time low. Citizens seek honest answers to their questions. This can only be found in open debate. We need open, uncensored debate without conflict of interest. We as Namibians have had enough. We want to have a voice. We want to have our lives back. The Health Defense League provides a place for people to become involved for that. What is our mission? To empower communities and unite people. To defend and promote their freedoms. To protect human rights, basic human rights encourage open debate and to assist in creating and maintaining healthy living environments. The Health Defense League offers a place where open-minded people connect with peers, can discuss issues at hand, and find uncensored information, science, and data. In addition, the Health Defense League will provide support and defense for those who feel victimized, censored, or feel their human rights are abused. This may be in public, at their workplace, or in the modern media environment. What are our objectives? We are, our objectives are to provide, uphold, and defend emotional health, trustworthy partners and partnership, communication channels, common resources with legal, financial, and scientific communities and networks, freedom of speech, 
freedom of choice, freedom of association, protection of children and vulnerable groups, rule of law, national as well as international, adherence to the Namibian constitution, adherence to the Nuremberg Code, adherence to the Helsinki Code, human health as related to economic, social, environmental, and emotional health, self-governance and independent decision-making and responsibility, community rights to autonomy. What are our structures and how could you be a part of the Health Defense League? The Health Defense League is a voluntary association, a structured and functional legal entity, independent of its members. It is of a non-profit structure. It's a grassroots network of free critical thinkers without conflict of interest. It is a community with financial, legal, and scientific resources, a home for members with strong ethical principles, critical thinking abilities, and inherent convictions for human freedoms and fundamental rights. Membership applications will be by, membership will be by application, and upon certain contributions on a regular basis. Membership will be in three forms. One, you could be an active member. This is a person or an association who is actively involved with the Health Defense League, or who is prepared to contribute a minimum amount per month on a regular basis. Two, you could be part as a supporter this is a person who supports the Health Defense League with a monthly amount but is not involved actively in any function within the Health Defense League. Three, you could mainly be a follower, a person who joins the Health Defense League but is not actively involved or gives any financial support to the Health Defense League. Depending on member profile, certain services and benefits will be available to members and will be developed and announced by the steering committee from time to time. The above was a summary of what the Health Defense League will work for. The focus is not on politics, viral threats, medical intervention or trails. The focus is on what all these do to human rights. As humans, we only have a choice, act or be acted upon, as per the words from Stephen R. Convey. What do we stand for? We stand for freedom of speech, freedom of choice, freedom to work, freedom to associate, defending our constitution and laws against mandating experimental medical traits, against discriminatory mandates at work, be it school or any public institution. I thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here and sharing the time with us here. As we've heard, Namibia has been in turmoil for the last just under two years. And if a country is under stress and we try to find our way, the only thing we can do is become brutally honest with each other. There's no time for deceit, there's no time for bullshit. It's about survival of our country, of our people, of our economies. And we can only do that by being brutally honest. The second thing we can use is the laws we have. Namibia has got one of the most acknowledged best constitutions in the world. Why? Because it's the youngest. And our founders have had the chance to learn from other countries. So we can be thankful, we can be grateful, we are stuck with one of the best constitutions and laws we have in the world. Let's go to history. If we look at the last 200 years, there have been lots of strife, there have been wars, there have been bloodshed. And Many in those, or most of those incidences, 
were not started by Namibians. Many were started by foreign influence. Why do I say that? The recent liberation struggle was supported by international players. We all know that. As Namibians, we ended up brother against brother. Good for us, we, we survived that, and from independence, I think we've achieved something phenomenal. Namibia has grown together more in these last 32 years than it has grown together in the last 150 years before that. That is amazing. And we should always keep that in our mind. What is sad though, that at the moment, we observe the same thing happen. We've got foreign influences telling us what to do, telling us what to use, who are the good guys and the bad guys within our families, within our communities, and within our country. And I believe that's the wrong way to go. If you look at the separation and this polarization, we can even see doctors and professionals against each other. Now, doctors are just normal human beings. Doctors are intelligent human beings, but they are guided by the influences that any other human being has got as well. If we go back in the history of medicine, there are a couple of incidences that should teach us something. And I'm going to pull out three. The first one was in 1845. A guy called Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis in Austria. He observed that in a certain war in his hospital, when women were giving birth, 25% of those women picked up an infection and ultimately died. He also observed that in another ward where the midwives were working, that did not happen. There the mortalities were about 5%. Zimmerweis went along and he observed that in a ward with a high mortality, the doctors were catching the babies, delivering them. He also observed that the doctors, before they went there, often worked in a place where they were studying cadavers. And he thought maybe there is something that the doctors picked up on these dead cadavers that they then transmitted to the woman. So what did he do? He basically took his ward and the doctors in his ward and he told them to wash their hands in lime water. Completely normal thing. Guess what? The mortality dropped from 25% to 1% just because he instilled a hygienic measure that prevented bacteria being carried from the dead people to the woman. What happened to him? He was ostracized. He was kicked out of his medical community. He died in an asylum a couple of years later. You remember that case and you think about it. The second case was a guy in 1945 called Fritz Gerald. He started treating stomach ulcers with antibiotics, like every doctor does today. Again, he was taken to court, he was sued by the medical community. And a couple of years later, another person received the Nobel Prize for exactly treating and uh, stomach ulcers with antibiotics because they found that it's been um, started by some bacteria. The third and last one I want to leave with you is if you go into the internet and you look at advertisements in the 1960s about cigarettes, you will find a whole host of doctors standing there advertising to smoke cigarettes so that your throat becomes smooth. No doctor in his right mind would today advertise cigarettes. Why well, am I telling you these things? I'm telling you that because I believe doctors are human. They do what they do because they believe they're on the right track. And sometimes the doctors, and I'm, a, I'm part of that community, are not on the right track. And it takes a big person to then learn and admit there is another way. We know also that today's issues, and we see it all the time, are not about specific medical procedures. It is a trial. 
And it says so. If you go back to the South African website and you Google Sisonke, which was the old rollout of the human trial, it is a trial on humans that will only end in 2023. So let's keep in mind that we recommend that to people. It is a trial. Ladies and gentlemen, when we in the medical community, and we have got incredible capable people with many years of experience, are in a situation where we have to fight to use a certain established drug to save the lives of our patients because our government all of a sudden doesn't allow that specific drug to be used on humans after many, many years of usage. And there are examples in that. Uh, that you all know that have been in the press. Then there is something really wrong. The government is not the doctor. And the government, sadly enough, does not bear the ultimate responsibility for a person dying or not. It's normally the doctor who's very intimately involved with that decision. So we cannot leave it to the government to make life and death decisions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. The government should set a framework and the doctors should take their knowledge and responsibility and be able to act within that. And I assume that most of them know what to do. When you have policies, like we had at the beginning of this whole dilemma, where you send people home, you put them in self-isolation, you put them under extreme stress, you expose them to terrifying messages every single day, 24 hours, and you create poverty, and helplessness, you are slowly killing a person. That has got absolutely nothing to do with prevention. It doesn't help a single person, it's killing a nation. We have to remember that over all this time, we've lost 3,556 people from or with COVID. And that's really sad, and we all know that. But everything else that happened to this country was because of the measures that were instilled. And there's no politics here, it's just facts that can, everybody can observe, and we all know that. We as the HDL, we are all about choice. Now I've, n I've named uh, our rules and there's the constitution and laws. If you, take, if you go to a person and you advise them to do ABC, that is absolutely perfectly right. If a company advises you to do ABC, that's perfectly acceptable. If a doctor tells you to do ABC and gives you the information to go with it, that is absolutely perfectly right and we will support that 100%. What is not right, if you then go, if the person doesn't do what you say you sh what he should do, that you start discriminating against, you put them in a corner and you threaten them with loss of their livelihoods. That is against the law, it's unconstitutional, and it's completely against human rights. The moment you do that, you should also bear the liability that goes with it. And it's as simple as that. We are all grown people. Namibians have survived in a very harsh but beautiful environment for hundreds and hundreds of years. Our forefathers had, had incredible skills, and we still have them. We love this place with all our heart, and ladies and gentlemen, we are standing up to preserve our own space in this universe. The HDL is about choice. That is our fundamental focus. We are not telling anybody what to do, but we will defend our choices that we have as a birthright and as a constitutional right. We will not give medical advice, we will not give legal advice, but what we will do is, we will receive the queries, we will put through certain key gatekeeping mechanisms, and we will be able to refer people with queries to the right medical persons and to the right legal persons. And this is our function. We are a facilitator, we are not doctors, and we will stay away from medical advice 
what we will do, we will keep, give people health advice that they can support their own health in their own four walls or in, within their families, but we will not treat people. Ultimately, we would like to cooperate with any entity, any person that has got the same values. We've got an open door policy and we would like to try and be as transparent as humanly possible. There are no secrets. And I believe what we stand for is very fundamental. And I think most people in this room can understand where we go. We will be part, I'm, an, I'm excited to say, of the African Health Summit 2021, which will be a very big online event with international players, players from the UK, from America, from Canada, Australia, really exciting. We will be forwarding some marketing material to you guys, the media, and it will run on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of November. Three of our members will present certain aspects of the Namibian situation, about the legal situation, about the medical situation. So we are full on joining the international community for freedom and health. Thank you very much.